CRISPR technique, the ultimate genetic power versus the ethical minefield. All right, let's connect the dots. In our last video, we talked about the Human Genome Project, that massive, incredible mission that gave us a complete map of the human genetic code. Well, what's a map without a toolbox? What's a blueprint without a pencil to edit it? Welcome to the future. Welcome to CRISPR. The genetic scissors. Look, we all know the story. You're born with a problem, a little typo in your body's code, and you have to deal with it for life. But what if you could go back and edit the text? Erase the mistakes? This isn't just about a couple of scientists in lab coats. This is a detective story that started with bacteria. Yes, tiny bacteria, fighting off viruses with a kind of immune system. They'd grab a piece of the virus's DNA and tuck it away in their own genome as a memory. Then, if the virus ever came back, they'd send out a guided missile to destroy it. This system, full of weird acronyms like CRISPR, clustered regularly interspaced short palindromic repeats, and CAS9, was the key. And two brilliant women, Jennifer Doudna and Emmanuel Charpentier, figured it all out, winning the Nobel Prize for their work. They basically said, wait a minute, if bacteria can do this, can't we use it to edit any DNA? Boom. So what is CRISPR? The simple idea is this. It's a pair of molecular scissors. What makes these scissors so magical? A GPS. You have the Cas9 protein, which is the scissor part, and a guide RNA, which is the GPS that takes the scissors to the exact spot in your DNA you want to cut. You tell it, go to the gene for sickle cell disease and snip. You can disable the gene, or better yet, replace the bad code with a good one. It's cheap, it's easy to use, and it's incredibly precise. The new therapeutic reality. The applications are everywhere. This is not just lab talk, it's happening right now. Cascavi, Exacel. This is the first FDA-approved CRISPR therapy. Developed by CRISPR Therapeutics and Vertex Pharmaceuticals, it's a revolutionary one-time treatment for sickle cell disease and transfusion-dependent beta-thalassemia. It works by editing the patient's own blood stem cells to turn back on a gene for fetal hemoglobin, which prevents red blood cells from sickling. Intellia Therapeutics. This company is using CRISPR to target a rare genetic disease called hereditary angioedema. Their therapy, NTLA-2002, is designed to be a one-time treatment that stops attacks by inactivating a gene that causes swelling. Beam Therapeutics. This company is working on a new type of CRISPR called base editing, which they describe as a pencil that can change a single letter of the DNA without making a full cut. Their therapy, BEAM101, is in clinical trials for sickle cell disease. But here's the plot twist you didn't see coming. This life-changing treatment comes with a price tag that will make your eyes pop out. A single dose of Kazgevi is priced at $2.2 million. It's one of the most expensive medicines in the world. While the lifetime cost of managing a disease like sickle cell can be even higher, this price immediately raises a huge question. Who gets to have a cure? This isn't just an economic issue. It's a massive ethical dilemma about equitable access. The great fear. But hold on. With this kind of power comes the biggest fear of all. What if we use these scissors for things other than medicine? This isn't just a hypothetical. Back in 2018, a Chinese scientist, He Jiankoi, announced he had used CRISPR to edit the genes of twin girls to make them resistant to HIV. He went ahead and edited the germline, meaning those changes could be passed down to future generations. This was a clear violation of international ethical guidelines and was widely condemned by the scientific community. The fear is that this could open the door to eugenic selection and social inequality. What if we create a world where some people are enhanced and others are not? These are the massive, scary questions we all have to face.